What's going on, beautiful people? The Black Hokage here, aka TBH. And to be honest, I'd like to welcome you back to my show, Hokage Thoughts. The show where ain't no hoes, but we do think out loud here on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever you choose to listen to this show on. Today, in which I'm recording, is January 23rd, 2021, and Trump is no longer president. Can we get a. So maybe we can finally get something done about this COVID-19 because motherfuckers is tired of sitting in the house. I will say um, it was funny, like right before uh, he left the White House, he was like trying to pardon a bunch of people. I think he was like trying to pardon like Lil Wayne. That was random. Like, let me make sure nobody thinks I'm racist. So I'm going to pardon some black people, going to pardon some rappers and they're going to love me and then they're going to reelect me. and We're going to find the votes. We're going to find the 40,000 votes floating in the river. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was thinking, but I feel like that's what it was. Freaking. I see some people on Twitter talking about um, he should have also pardoned like Tay-K or not nah, keep that nigga, bro. Fuck that shit. Anyways, uh. If you want to support the show, the best way to support the show is rate this show five stars on Apple Podcasts so it helps me move up the algorithm. If you rate the show five stars on Apple Podcasts, it'll help bring in new listeners. If you want to financially support the show, you want to take your support even further, please send your donations on over to my 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 cash app. My cash app is dollar sign the Black Hokage 08. If you're watching the video version at youtube.com slash the Black Hokage, I'm pointing to my cash app right now. Dollar sign the Black Hokage 08. Doesn't matter what you donate. It could be a dollar, five, ten, ten million. Everything's appreciated. Keeps the kid motivated. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about some gaming today. Uh, some of my favorite games. Uh, I totally forgot about Watch Dogs, so I, I was going to talk about that a little bit because I forgot to talk about that. Uh, and then I got a bunch of questions from you guys. So if you guys want to submit questions for the next uh, podcast, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore I Keep It Real. If you're watching the video version, there's a link to all my social medias in the description box below, as well as a link to my Xbox Series X giveaway. I'm giving away a free next gen console this month in January. Uh, I think you got like eight days left to enter. So if you're watching the video version at YouTube.com slash the Black Hokage and you want a free next gen console, they're really hard to get. There will be a link in the description box below. Pause this video. It doesn't take a minute, but a minute to sign up uh, and then come back and listen to the podcast, watch the podcast, whatever. All right. So the first little tidbit, this is this is actually an update to a video that I update. I uploaded yesterday. So yesterday, if you if you don't follow me on YouTube, I uploaded a video talking about how Microsoft was trying to fuck everybody over. Um, they announced that they were going to be increasing the prices of Xbox Live. And you would think I think they would have got away with it if they would have been like, yo, instead of sixty dollars a year, we're going to bump it up to. 65 or like 70 i think they would have got away with that but they bumped it up from 60 dollars a year to 120 dollars a year and the thing about um xbox as well that pissed people off i forgot to mention this in the video um free to play games you have to have xbox live on um on xbox so it would have been 120 dollars a year just to play apex legends which is a free to play game think about that that shit pissed people off for them to double the prices with the pandemic going on so i was reporting on my theory on why i think they did that uh we had a good time about that and literally i kid you not like three four hours after i dropped that video i was live streaming over at twitch.tv slash the black okage and um the news broke that they were recanting their statement they are no longer going to be raising the prices let me show you guys this shit was funny and this is the power of voicing your uh opinions correctly voicing your concerns correctly do not let these corporations get, get over on you do not let them fuck you over uh so xbox took to twitter uh and they said today was not a great day we always try to do our best and today we missed the mark we hear you and we're reversing our Xbox Live Gold pricing updates to bring Xbox Live more in line with how we see the player at the center of the experience. We will be removing gold requirements for free to play games. <laughs> so before it was $60 a year just to play free to play games. They're getting rid of a period now. Like y'all, y'all spook these motherfuckers so much. This is great. And we're going to start working on that immediately and we'll have updates in the coming months. Let's get something straight. This is a fucking billionaire, billion dollar company corporation they didn't they didn't they, they said we try to do our best they didn't try to do your best they tried to fuck you over and they're just upset that you're sad and they don't want to lose their money because they got a good thing going here they got they got greedy and now the now the, the community is upset with them so now they're trying to recant their statement and shit like i literally showed it in my video i showed the stock prices of microsoft microsoft is a is a very steady stock it always goes up a little bit sometimes it has like it dips or whatever but it stays in that 200 dollars range for the most part um so it's like the company's doing great financially because although xbox doesn't make them a lot of money they have windows and every goddamn pc has went not everyone because some of you guys are different you guys run linux so nobody cares but i would say about 99 
99% of PCs run on Windows. And because they have a monopoly on the market, Microsoft honestly is one of those companies where it's kind of too big to fail. They had to do something absolutely fucking stupid to fail. Um, so for them to do this, talking about the, the price hikes, yeah, people were pissed. And you guys voiced your concerns. So kudos to the gaming community for voicing your concerns. Um, because you guys, you guys didn't take the bullshit, and now the price is not not only going to double, but they're actually going to get rid of that that gold requirement to play free to play games. So you actually not only stopped it, but you actually in, improved uh, Xbox Live for everybody else. And like I had put out a tweet, and I was like, "Damn, if only the 2K community would uh would band together and do some shit like this." Um, I mean, there's some content creators in the community that like voice their concerns, but there's also a good portion of the 2K community that, for those of you unaware, they sign contracts with 2K and they have to suck their dick every fucking five seconds uh, and talk about how great the game is. Uh, and that's why you don't really see any changes. That's why you don't really see some of them. Uh, what's the name? What's it called? Uh, criticizing the game. I think Agent had talked about that in the video. He didn't want to sign the contract. But you have to sell, you have to sell your soul to get that logo. It seems like I don't know. I don't want to. I don't have any evidence. I don't want to. I don't know. Shit's goofy. I just wish y'all would grab. Man, fuck that game. NBA Live. Where y'all at, man? Where y'all at? Where y'all at? So shout out to y'all. Xbox still don't got no games, though. Um, Let's see. But if you want to win an Xbox, free link link in the description box below. I'm giving it away. Uh, What other stories I got for you? Do, 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 do. Oh, GameStop stocks. Oh, my God, bruh. So, yeah, I don't know if y'all can see this. GameStop's stock is currently at $65 right now. Um, a year ago, the GameStop stock was worth shit. It was worth like $4 a share. Uh, so like, as you can see, like in the last 24 hours, it's jumped up 51%. Everybody's talking about it, including people in my chat. People kept coming to my Twitch, my Twitch, TBH, TBH, did you see the fucking GameStop stock? Should I buy GameStop? Should I, should I get this money? Should I listen? In my opinion, I, I normally I don't talk about stocks like that on here, but because this is gaming related, in my opinion, I don't think you should buy this shit. The reason this uh, this GameStop stock is going up is because Microsoft uh, bought like a portion of GameStop and they're implementing it into their stores a little bit or something like that. And then also the boost in sales from the next gen consoles. But once the once next gen consoles become more readily available, people are not going to be all over fucking GameStop like that. And who the fuck is trying to hang out at GameStop? I don't think I, I think it's inevitable for GameStop to fail. I think I think it, it's it's a chance. I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. Game GameStop could weather the storm and they could survive. But the, its current business model is such a fucking dinosaur. Like who the fuck goes to GameStop? You can just order it off Amazon, or you can just order the game digitally off the store, and then they rip people off. They built up such bad PR, ripping people off with their trade-in program as well as their shitty ass credit cards. Um, I just don't see this business surviving long term. So. For those of you who are actually in on this play, kudos to you. But those people who are making money, it's because they bought it at like three, four dollars when it was dirt cheap last year. Um, and now that it's boosted up because everybody's talking about it. That's the real reason it is. It's it's Siggy was saying it last night on stream. It's a lot of rookie investors that are on Reddit and shit, just hyping it up. And like people are buying into the hype. So it's boosting up the fucking shares. But it's all artificial. It's not real. This company has not made money in like five years. Look this shit up, bro. They're fucking broke. So it's not a long term investment. So if you were able to get it when it was like four dollars and you were lucky enough to see it jump up to 65 and maybe it'll go up a little bit more shh, cash out, dog, get your money and get out, because I don't think long term this is going to be a great investment. They just don't they're not they haven't announced anything for their business that I think will um, help sustain it over the next 10 to 20 years or whatever. They announced that they're trying to transform it more into like a lounge type situation where it's a place to hang out and not just buy games. And like, I think that might spark some interest a little bit, but like in the long term, I don't know if that'll, that'll like survive. And then that was supposed to launch like last year or coming like early this year. And I think they did it in one plate and like somewhere in the Midwest, but the plans got halted because of COVID. So like right now, GameStop doesn't have any real business plan to boost their income. They're literally getting saved by the next gen consoles. Okay. And Microsoft putting a little bit of money in them. But long term, I don't think this is a great play. If you were able to get in on it when it was fucking dirt cheap, when it was a damn penny stock, good for you. Sell the shit. Don't be greedy. Take profit and keep it moving because I think this shit is going to burst. It's a bubble that's ready to burst and it's going to dip. They cannot sustain this. Nobody shops at GameStop. Last time I was at GameStop, it was fucking toys all over the floor, plush toys and fucking di Minecraft diamond axe swords and shit all over the floor and shit. I'm tripping everywhere. Kids running, screaming. Fuck it. I think I saw some poop in the corner. Fucking, they had the black guy with the dreads, with the fucking patchy beard, uh, the ugly fat white chick with the 3DS in the back of the pocket. Like, nobody, it's just a horrible experience. Nobody wants to go there.
nobody wants to go there so i would not advise anybody to buy because that's expensive 65 dollars a share that's that's over a hundred dollars for two shares in a company that's that ain't shit uh it's way too expensive don't don't buy this shit you should have got it when it was early too late and if you do got it get in and get out because it's a short-term play uh let's see i know y'all was excited holy shit he finally talked about stocks on here stock about stocks yeah because it was gaming related and that's the only fucking reason all right so let's talk about it let's talk about it so uh top 10 no not top 10 games because i didn't have a top 10 my favorite games of 2020 i think that's what we're gonna call it uh or the top games of 2020 um a lot of y'all were asking me in my stream uh, if i had did a top 10 games of 2020 and to be honest like i sat there and thought about it i didn't have a top 10 games because 2020 was weak as hell in terms of games the first half was cool but the second half was just weak as hell in my opinion um so i wasn't able to come up with 10 i think we talked about our favorite games on the gi podcast but obviously a lot of y'all didn't listen to it so i guess i'll repeat myself on this podcast on what were my favorite games but if you come over to the twitch streams you probably have an idea of what it is so let's talk about it uh i created a list uh, I only have six games that like I genuinely enjoyed in 2020. Uh, and then I have a few honorable mentions. Uh, and this is in no particular order. Uh, I'm just going to, well, yeah, yeah, no, no particular order. I'm just going to state what were my favorite games. And if you missed out on them, I think these are the ones that are worth playing from 2020. Uh, so the first and foremost, this one might be uh, random, but Animal Crossing New Horizons. I actually really enjoyed this. This was my first Animal Crossing that I ever played. I think uh, I think I really enjoyed this because it just helped to relax the mind. It's almost like meditation in video game form. Um, if you've never played Animal Crossing, you'll probably sit there and wonder, like, what's the point of the game? And in all honesty, there's no fucking point. Uh, you just walk around town, you plant trees, you go fishing, you interact with all the little different funny characters, you interact with the events. You can live your free. You can go to your friend's island. You can steal stuff from them. It's like it's it's almost kind of like The Sims with like cute ass animals and shit. Um, the only thing that I would say that makes it different though, like that's really dope about it. I think Animal Crossing is actually a really great game. At least New Horizons, because I don't know how the other ones play. I think Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Switch is a great game for kids. If you have kids or like a little nephew or a little cousin, I think you should gift them this game because it does a great job of teaching you about economics and uh, what it means to be an adult. Because there's this character in the game named Tom Hook, and he will rob you for everything. This motherfucker is a loan shark. He's going to teach you real quick quick what it means to get a loan, what it means to be on credit, and what it means to pay somebody back. So, like, basic economics, low-key, this game does teach it, and I think it's actually good for kids. Uh, and it's just a very relaxing game to go fishing and just chill with your friends. Uh, I think that I think this game came at the perfect time when COVID first hit, and I, I enjoyed it for, like, a good five months or whatever, so shout out to animal crossing new horizons that's what uh that's one game that i would pick the next one is probably really random you probably wouldn't expect this but i actually really enjoyed genshin impact it is available on pretty much every platform pc console it's on mobile too uh and what's really good about it is like the your accounts are linked so like i was playing mainly on pc when i was playing this heavily and then i remember i was like let me try out the mobile version bro you log into the mobile version and i swear to god where i had i remember i was on pc i left off in the middle of like an island or something like that and i was thinking when i logged into mobile it would just log me in and i would have all my, my game saved but it would put me like in a town or whatever uh one of the hub worlds it literally logged me in and i picked up exactly where i left off on that island like the 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 cross save on that shit is fucking fire but in terms of gameplay genshin impact is basically like um it's like breath of the wild meets mass effect almost uh or or any bioware game because every bioware games has that that primer and detonator system um so like the movement system and the climbing and in the world the beauty of the world and the exploration reminds me a lot of breath of the wild the color palette is vibrant but the actual combat it reminds me a lot of, of a bioware game where like you have you collect different characters and they all have different type of elements and abilities and you can combine those abilities to create bigger explosions and attacks and stuff so it's exactly like bioware's detonation system the prime and detonation system so like the best way to describe this game is a free-to-play breath of the wild meets mass effect and like if that sounds interesting to you i think you should try it because it's free to play the only knock that i have on genshin impact and like this game would probably be top tier probably top three to me if it didn't have this was its actual business model it's what they call a gotcha game because it is a mobile game um that you can play on pc and um 
console uh it has a lot of microtransactions in it you can unlock all the characters playing for free but this shit is super grindy and unfortunately that's kind of what made me drop the game the gameplay mechanics and the exploration is a ton of fun the world and fighting the big enemies and bosses a ton of fun and it has a story fully voice acted like you'd be genuinely shot how much quality of life like how quality this free-to-play game is like it changed the game in my opinion but that 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 grinding aspect it just kind of got on my nerves if you have the time for it especially with covid going on i think you'll really enjoy genshin impact for me i just didn't have the time to sit there and grind and i don't want to pay for characters like i'm i'm just not a big dlc buyer i'm not a big microtransaction buyer i stand by that shit i'm gonna die on that hill and it is what it is but i think it's still worth giving a shot because it's free to play it's called genshin impact it's made by a chinese developer uh, a lot of people were saying that it's a ripoff of uh, Breath of the Wild, but like they even, they said in an interview, they were heavily inspired by that. But in my opinion, it's Breath of the Wild meets Mass Effect. And if that sounds interesting to you, I think you should check out Genshin Impact. Um, the next one that I have on my list for top games of 2020 is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, not a lot to say here. I mean, you saw my review. I really enjoyed the game. Um, if you enjoyed the first Marvel Spider-Man on the PS4, you'll enjoy Miles Morales. It's on PS4, but I played it on PS5 game's gorgeous the combat is great with all the new electric abilities new gadgets uh miles story was really good the only real knock on it is it's really short uh and then on top of that it's short and some of the new side missions that like the prowler side missions i didn't like that shit so it made it even shorter because i skipped all of his side missions they were fucking ass um but the actual story and the set pieces and the boss fights it is a roller coaster ride Unfortunately, it's a roller coaster ride that you can get through in like four hours if you just run through the story. I did. I, I beat the game at like 95 percent and it took me like seven or eight hours. It didn't take long. It did not take long. I beat that bitch at like in three, four set, uh, sittings, um, but it was still a good game. Uh, I just wish it was longer. Uh, it's not a reason to buy a PS5. So if you want to get Miles Morales, I highly recommend getting it on PS4. Maybe wait till like the price drops on it if you, uh, because because it's so short. But it is still one of my favorite games of 2020 that uh, I enjoyed. I just wished it was a little bit longer. It's like I said, if you I don't know what to say about it other than you're kind of just playing it for the story because uh, it's kind of more of the same just with the black guy and Tim's and new suits. Shout out to Miles. Um the next one i got on my list is doom eternal this game turned me into a doom fan i was not, i've never really been a doom fan and i played the original on pc way back in the 90s i played the doom 2016 it just didn't really do much for me but doom eternal which is the sequel to doom's 2016 reboot this one was fire bro like and just as a warning like this is easily the most fast-paced shooter balls to the wall ass shit i've ever played like you have to be in a certain mood i remember there were certain days where i was tired and like you're moving so fast and constantly like just shifting your eyes like you will get really mentally tired playing this game because um the, the way the mechanics work is in order to get more ammo and to heal you have to constantly be killing shit so that forces you to constantly be on the move like it's so fucking fat and it creates really fun situations because you mix and match the weapons and abilities and you create these crazy combos through shooting it's one of those games if, if you want to turn your brain off if you had a really bad day and you just want to go to hell and blast some motherfuckers doom eternal is fire the soundtrack is fire with the fucking rock playing in the background it really gets you in the mood i couldn't tell you what the fuck is going on in the story other than you're in hell and fighting some some demons or some shit like that but if you need a game that is a stress reliever doom eternal is lit just make sure that you got enough rest because like i said it is going to hurt your eyes and also the game is visually gorgeous one of the best looking games i played it on pc and it was optimized it ran smooth it this game turned me into a doom fan and if there's going to be a third if they're doing a trilogy with the new reboot i definitely will be on the next doom i definitely will be on it i highly recommend picking it up um and the next one I got on my list is Ghost of Tsushima. Man, niggas love ninjas and niggas love samurai. This game got both. Uh, and on top of that, it got a great story, man. Um, freaking, if you're not familiar with Ghost of Tsushima, I'm sure you heard about it, but the Mongols invade Japan and you play a guy who starts off as a samurai, but in order to defeat the Mongols, the Mongols, you know, they, they fought by any means necessary. Uh, they did a lot of sneaky and just, you know, whatever type tactics, but be samurais live by a code so you play this character that's like struggling with his identity like should he honor his uncle and remain to the samurai code and fight in an honorable manner or do you take on the skill tree of the ninja and you start learning more stealthy tactics and become dishonorable and because of that there's multiple endings for that which is fire um the combat is fire you can you can create like a hybrid of a samurai and a ninja 
um and like what was great about this is the the game was fucking gorgeous the colors popped um the, the white flowers the yellows the trees blowing in the wind i didn't like the blowing in the wind mechanic to find the mission i didn't like that shit but the standoffs when you had to stand off with people and like quick kill them um the final boss fight the side missions were great in this game this they were side missions with meaning because you had to interact with different npcs in the in the world who had their own stories and you had to help them almost kind of like um, mass effects loyalty missions and they had multiple chapters to their side missions and upon completing those you would get like special gear or unlocks that that it, it rewarded you for doing the side missions but you were also invested in them because it felt like it was a part of the main story and it helped you bond with those characters um i felt very satisfied like and then the icing on the cake is like a couple months later they came out with the multiplayer and the multiplayer was fire and the crazy part is i think think the multiplayer i feel like it's just a beta there's going to if you play it there i'm not gonna spoil anything but if you play it i feel like there's gonna be a ghost of shishima too like it, it ended on a cliffhanger um a good cliffhanger in my opinion i wasn't mad about it um it got me excited i was like ooh. and then they put that multiplayer out i feel like the multiplayer in ghost of shishima one was kind of a beta test to kind of get a feel for how the people feel about it and i feel like they're gonna make some tweaks and balances and they're gonna come back and i think ghost of shishima 2 multiplayer is going to be more heavily implemented in it and if it is i would like to see them do co-op in the story um that would be fire kind of like what they're doing with um gotham knights uh being able to play stealth with friends because that always creates funny moments but like woof this game was bloody the story was great great set pieces great action great skill trees this was just a very satisfying game for those of you all that out there bitching that ubisoft will not make uh assassin's creed japan honestly this is pretty much this is like the closest thing we got to it like it was it was the, the parkour the only thing i would knock on is the parkour is not as good as uh assassin's creed is not as fluid but it's it's good enough it's serviceable i say that but if you're looking for assassin's creed japan you gotta play ghost of Tsushima. come on guys and last but not least i said that i would not put these in any order those those last five that i just listed they're in no particular order but this one if i did have to put it in order i feel like this would be my number one favorite game my favorite game of 2020 was final fantasy 7 remake part one um i've never really been a big final fantasy fan but i feel like this game turned me into a final fantasy fan um once you got a, uh, I was a little iffy about it, but once I got a hang of the combat, the flow of it, it's not a button masher. It's more of an ebb and flow type of game. Once I understood the flow of it, it was nothing but pure fun. The spells you get in it, the ability to uh, cast like them big ass monsters and shit, the summons, I mean like that. The boss fights were epic, bro. Fighting that fucking, that house that had like all the elements and shit. That shit had me sweating. It had the Twitch chat on fucking edge. It was just, and then I was thoroughly engaged by the story. Like I never, uh, I, I did play Final Fantasy VII, but I never beat it. I played it like at a friend's house. That came out like in what, 97, I think, or something like that. I was a kid, I didn't have a PlayStation. So like, I only got to see tidbits of it at my friend's house. So I actually got to see the full story. And then the ending was fire. And the chat was telling me that like the ending is actually different from the original one. They changed it a little bit. Um, so like, I enjoyed what I played. The, the final boss fight with fucking Sephiroth. That shit was fucking fire, bro. Um, I look I look forward to part two like it Final Fantasy 7 15 was like eh, to me it was okay but this 7 remake and it was gorgeous by the way on the PS4 that shit pushed the PS4 I got a PS4 Pro that shit pushed it to its fucking limits you could tell that game was fucking gorgeous and I am looking forward to part two I really hope that they don't do what they did they said they might do in the fucking article there was an article where the developer was saying that like they want to because of the strong response that the remake got they want to rush the development and they want to get out more content as possible so there might be more than because I think the original plan was to only do like two parts um but like they're talking about doing multiple i'm like mm, i don't know about that part one uh, of the final fantasy remake it's uh it took me like 40 hours to beat uh some people it took them like 50 60 it depends on how many side missions and shit you do there's a lot of content here apparently a lot of content that was not in the original game so that's why they broke it down into parts it's not the same it actually is a remake and this remake i thoroughly enjoyed uh i'm a fan fucking of all the characters in it um the way you could switch between the different characters at any point by hitting the d-pad and then being able to combo the abilities it kind of once again reminded me of the primer and detonator system in mass effect um anything that's like mass effect i love that shit i love that shit so i look forward to the sequel that was my favorite game of 2020 um uh, a few honorable mentions so i just started playing this game but i feel like if i finished it uh i would it probably would have been on this list so i had to put it on the honorable missions just out of integrity because i did not finish the game because the ending might be completely trash but based off what i played like the 10 hours that i have on it immortals phoenix rising 
Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying this game, and I feel like this is going to be one of my favorite games from 2020 when it's said and done. It kind of went under the radar. If I, I, I did a preview video on it because I got to play it early, but um, the reason I didn't play it when it came out is because it came out like the same week that Cyberpunk came out. Fuck that game. Um, I'm, just, I'm joking. Not fuck that game, but <laughs> notice it's not on the list. Eh. Um, I didn't play it because Cyberpunk had came out like the same week. And Ubisoft didn't really promote this game, so it kind of flew under the radar and it got buried by Cyberpunk. But the best way I can describe Immortals Phoenix Rising is take Assassin's Creed meets uh, Devil May Cry meets uh, Breath of the Wild and mix those three together with this big, beautiful open world. It's just a simple, fun game that I promise you a lot of you. Literally, I've been recommending this game to people and literally everybody that's played it says they absolutely love it. And they all say the same thing. Where the fuck was the promotion for this game? Ubisoft really dropped the ball. So I I highly recommend you guys check out Immortals Phoenix Rising, especially because you should be able to. I seen it on sale like a week or two ago for like 30 bucks or whatever, because like I said, it flew under the radar. It did, I don't think it's going to sell well because it's a new IP, but the game is just flat out fun. If you love Breath of the Wild, you love Devil May Cry, you love Assassin's Creed, you're going to love this game. And on top of that it has like this cheeky sense of humor uh it's not a game you take too seriously it's vibrant its color is beautiful somebody in my twitch chat said the other day when i was playing it on stream he said um he's like i see what you mean when you say you want more like just fun spirited games like this game is so colorful and beautiful and just lighthearted and fun to play i'm like yeah that's what games are supposed to be about like i'm sick and tired of games like the last of us 2 you notice that wasn't on my list either like they, they take themselves way too freaking seriously bro i don't need all this dark and gloomy shit the world is dark and gloomy the world is dark and gloomy i don't need that shit right now bro um the next honorable mention that i had was tony Hawk pro skaters one and two remaster um it was fire uh for the most part i got tired of collecting the tapes but it's a really good well done remaster they take some of the mechanics of the newer ones and improve the visuals and put it in one and two and you get this package that's really good and you can get that one for dirt cheap too but i, I played it on pc it ran really well um star wars squadrons i thought that was pretty good i uh, i actually really enjoyed the multiplayer i just didn't think the longevity of it was that great but i was surprised by star wars squadrons i i, I put that in the honorable mentions and then um what was it super mario all all stars 3d uh on the switch it's just a it's just a collection of uh what was it sunshine um super mario 64 and mario galaxy three classic games in one but basically it's not even a remaster it's just a port uh but i enjoyed playing sunshine besides the few headaches that i got with the camera uh it was still some great streams it was still some great streams so those are my honorable mentions as well as my favorite games of 2020 hopefully you guys enjoyed this i think i'm gonna turn this into a video so if you're watching the video version on youtube make sure to hit the like button if you did um but yeah, that's all I got for you. Let me take a swig of this water because I've been talking, talking, bro. It's a new year, so like many of you, I'm trying to do new things. And since we can't go out because of COVID-19, I decided I wanted to improve my cooking skills. And one of my favorite things to do while I cook is listen to music. The way I improve that music experience is with wireless earbuds from Raycon. Whether it's following along the directions in a kitchen, binging an audiobook while learning it, or powering through a new workout with a pumped up playlist in your ear, a pair of Raycons can make any activity easier and a better time. Raycons make great sound accessible to everyone. Their wireless earbuds start at half the price of the other premium audio brands. And guess what? If you think having white stems dangling out of your ears looks ridiculous, that's something you don't have to worry about with Raycons. They come in a range of stylish colorways, but always with a comfortable in-ear fit with a more discreet look. And they don't just look great. Raycons perform wherever you take them with up to six hours of playtime, water and sweat resistant construction, and Bluetooth that pairs quickly and seamlessly. And since Raycon is a sponsor of the show, know that Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for their listeners, and here's what you gotta do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Hokage. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order, so feel free to grab a pair in a spare that's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Hokage. One more time buyraycon.com slash hokage you owe it to yourself to make 2021 your year i know i do i spent 2020 slimming down and with this new body i gotta make sure it looks and it smells right and it's time to change things up i'm starting with some self-care from hawthorne see hawthorne is a premium tailored personal care brand that makes it easier for guys to feel and smell their best you start with their quiz on their website you head on over there it takes but two minutes to sign up and they'll ask you questions like what's your favorite drink do you smoke how often do you shower how often do you wash your hair and based off those answers they'll recommend the best products for you it was actually really easy to fill out it only took but a couple minutes to do and i was actually surprised how thorough the questions were in such a short period of time the products that i got include a cologne set that comes in a set of two one scent for work and another for play 
That alone adds more value than competition, in my opinion. And everywhere that I go now, I get compliments. And I'm not going to lie. I love it. I love it. So if you want to upgrade your self-care routine, Hawthorne is a fun and convenient way to get super high quality products tailored specifically for your needs. Hawthorne even takes the risk out of it by giving you free shipping on your order and returns. And if you don't like their products, which I highly doubt, then they'll even retailer them for you based off your feedback. And since they're a sponsor of the show, do what I did. Take Hawthorne's quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co and using promo code Hokage to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O and use promo code Hokage at checkout. Hawthorne.co and use code Hokage. <laughs> Speaking of games that didn't make the list from 2020, another game that came out that a lot of you guys forgot about was Watch Dogs Legion. I forgot about this game. I beat it on stream and I never reviewed it. I forgot about it. I was like, you know what? I need shit to talk about. Let me throw this on the fucking show notes and talk about it real quick. We ain't gonna spend too much time on this. So Watch Dogs Legions is the third game in the Watch Dogs franchise. In my opinion, Watch Dogs 1 was eh. It was like a six, um, but it, it built an interesting world. Watch Dogs 2? classic i love that game that shit was like an eight or a nine I, I i thoroughly enjoyed that game it had a lot of personality in that game and a lot of great gameplay mechanics and the the world of uh, san francisco that they built the bay area because it had it, it also had um it had oakland in there as well just amazing but watch dogs legion i feel bad for people too because i feel like with watch dogs too over time it built up a lot of hype and people are like the series is back the series is back and they come back with this bullshit um let's talk about it here's my review man so i mostly have negatives um first things first first positive i got like three uh you can literally play as anyone in Watch Dogs legion so that's why the game is called legion because you literally control a legion of individuals you can control a legion of individuals in the city of london this game takes place in london um you're playing dead uh dead sex sector in london in the future um and the way the story goes without spoiling anything is basically like this a uh, paramilitary group takes over the city for security reasons. He's like, like a, a private military that he contracts to London and they protect, they, they roam the streets and they protect London. Basically, London's in martial law and, you know, DedSec doesn't like that. So they're trying to get to the bottom of it and see what's really going on. Um, and what's cool about it is you can literally play as anyone. Um, the way the game works is you can walk around and you scan with your phone, uh, whoever you're playing with, because they'll give you like a couple default characters and then it'll tell you like their strengths and weaknesses. And based off that, you can recruit them into the team and, uh, you know, different characters will help. Um, certain characters help, I don't know, bring certain characters are great at gunplay. Certain characters have gadgets. Certain characters are better at stealth. Um, certain characters help. Uh, like let's say your character dies and has to go to the hospital or doesn't die but get injured and has to go to the hospital certain characters like if you get a, a paramedic it'll bring the characters back quicker because you have healers basically so it's all about building your roster up and switching it up for different scenarios in the mission um but that goes into my next that goes into my next um that actually goes into my first negative that's cool but once you get past the gimmick and like i was kind of like at the halfway point of the game you start to realize that gimmick is actually the, the game's biggest problem. Um, this game has no actual protagonist because you can play as anyone in the story. And it's a technical marvel, by the way. Literally, whoever you're playing as, they show up in the cutscenes with a different voice. That is cool. But that's also the game's problem. Um, the game has no pro protagonist and it kind of it kind of breaks the rules of storytelling. There's always a protagonist and an antagonist in storytelling. And that protagonist has to go through trials and tribulations and it builds up to a climax. Because there's no protagonist in the game, you build no sense of bond. You don't really give a fuck about who you're playing it. It just feels like you're playing as a mindless NPC. And that's actually my first negative. It felt like this game didn't have any personality because you're not playing it. And it was hard to go from playing as Marcus, who had a ton of personality. You really felt for this character and his story. And even, even, even uh, Aiden Pierce to some degree versus going to playing as anyone in the city and none of them have a fucking story they just show up in the cutscenes and they talk but they don't have a real story so you don't feel any sense of connection to the protagonist and you don't really feel any type of angst towards the villain who doesn't even show up till halfway through the fucking game uh and he was whack too uh so yeah that was my first negative the the, the lack of protagonist um Next positive is, uh, well, the next positive I had already said you play as anyone and they show up in the cutscenes. Uh, the next positive is the the character customization. It's cool. There's stores all over the, the, the city. So whatever character you're playing as, you can customize them in the way that they look. Um, and I guess if that matters, you, listen, I'm really reaching for positives here. I, whatever. Uh, the next negative <laughs> is um, 
So once you get past the gimmick and you start scanning people more, you start to notice that too many NPCs have the same skill. So when I previewed the game, this is why I always tell people when I get to preview a game early, take everything I say with a grain of salt because I got to play Watch Dogs Legion like six months before that came out. They let me play for like three hours early Ubisoft. And when I played it, I went around scanning and I couldn't find anybody that had the same skills. So I was thoroughly impressed by that. I was like, wow, like Ubisoft really created a lot of different type of NPC types, right? But once the full game comes out and I put like 40 hours into the game, like by halfway through the game, everybody had the same abilities and shit. So you're gonna run into a lot of the same NPCs uh, that have the same abilities. So you're not gonna, it, it, it feels like Pokemon at first, but it's really not. What happened is I found characters that I liked and then I pretty much just played them for the rest of the game. I didn't see any real reason to switch because it fit my play style. Um, so too many of the NPCs have same, the same skills and it, 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 it waters down the gimmick of being able to recruit anybody. There's no point once you find somebody that you like. Um, the last positive I have is there is a large skill tree. There's a lot of different abilities with gadgets and like takedowns and stuff like that. Um, like drones that, that attack drones this scout you have like um the spider bot that can like double jump and get you into certain places and electrify people and shit there's a lot of really cool different abilities you can unlock like a gun that shoots rubber bullets so you don't kill anybody if you want to play a non-lethal playthrough um there's a they have the rubber bullet shotgun the rubber bullet um um smg um and as well as like um, the hacking, like the, all the different hacking abilities is cool. Uh, there's some new abilities, but for the most part, it kind of stays the same. It has like that, those big ass lines that be all over the wall and you got to flip them around and connect the lines and shit like that. It didn't involve that much, but there is a little bit of new stuff there. Um, after that, all I got is ne negatives. Uh, performance issues. I played on the Xbox One, which is the last gen Xbox, not the new one. Um, and for the most part, I would say like 75% of the time it ran okay. But uh, I did run into some a lot of frame drops, like 25% of the time and some screen tearing. So noted that you are going to run into that. And then it's an open world Ubisoft game. Expect bugs and glitches. The same stupid ass Ubisoft AI. Go hide in the corner and they'll act like they never seen you or like you're clipping through and glitching shit. Um, there was one glitch that I encountered. I uploaded it on TikTok where I was literally in a mission. Uh, and it was a main story mission and I was getting chased by the police. And then my motorcycle literally just flung into the air and over a building like I fucking lost it on stream. So it's some really weird bugs and glitches in this shit. Um, and then on top of that, the story is boring um, and the characters are boring. I honest to God cannot name you one fucking character from this game. It was so fucking boring. And because I was like 80 percent through the game, like I was almost done with it. I just trucked through it. I was like, yo, I'm already this far. Let me just finish the game. The game is fucking boring. Um, and I, I feel like that's why they barely fucking promoted it. it. This it was this was hard to play. I'm not gonna lie. This was hard to play. This was not a terrible game. It's not like a fuck you, but I think my final recommendation for this is a hard skip. Do don't it's not even worth playing when the price drops. The shit's just boring. If you want a recommendation, play Watch Dogs 2. You could probably it was for free on the Epic Game Store. Um, I highly recommend playing Watch Dogs 2. That game is great. I don't know what the fuck happened with this game. London is boring and dry. It's fucking gray. It lacks color. It's cloudy like Cleveland. The story's boring. The characters are boring. There's no real protagonist. The NPCs all have the same abilities, performance issues, glitches, and bugs. It was just like, eh. It, it felt like with this game, the best way I can describe it is it felt like I was going through the motions. Um, it felt like just another open world Ubisoft game with no actual personality. And it was just an excuse to talk to my chat, basically, because you can turn your brain off when you play this game. Been there, done that. I wish I, I would have liked to seen them do more with the the melting pot, the melting of the world between Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs, but they didn't. There's some DLC coming out with an Assassin, but I'm not buying that shit. If you see me playing it, it's because I got it for free. But that is my recommendation on Watch Dogs Legions. I would say hard skip. Just act like the game don't exist. Um and that is all i got i think on the gaming side of things yeah that's all i got on my gaming side of things uh for my notes uh so we're gonna get into the questions but before we do let me get a quick swig of this water because my mouth is freaking dry mm -mm. okay we're now moving on to the question section of the podcast. This is your first time listening. I take questions from you guys, the viewers, and these questions can be about anything. It can be gaming related. It can be about life, business, whatever. Um, if you want to submit a question for the next podcast, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore. I keep it real before I record every episode, like the day before I always put out a tweet, say, Hey, I'm working on show notes. What questions do you guys have? 
And also understand as a disclaimer that these people are just asking me questions and this is me trying to answer them to the best of my ability. My word is not law. I am not God. Uh, you could do whatever the fuck you want with this information. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Yo, this shit sucks. Wait, this shit five stars. Uh, I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. I had a long night. I was, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning of the podcast, but I was up on fucking clubhouse to like almost six in the morning, just like networking and talking with people and making connections. So like, I'm a little tired, but the show goes on. All right. So the first question comes from Khalid or Khalid. We the best. And he says, why did you stop putting songs at the end of your videos? It seems like a good spot for getting promotion money, if nothing else. So for those of you unaware, uh, I've been around for a very long time and there's been like different eras of my channel, at least on YouTube. We're now going on a 14 year run. And um, when I first started YouTube, like the first maybe three, four years, um, I used to play songs at the end of uh, my videos. Actually, a couple rappers have blown up off of it. Uh, that didn't give me credit and that brand new. But anyways, um, freaking yeah i used to pro, i used to promote songs at the end of my videos but most of the songs were not underground artists most of them were like more mainstream or like mid-tier like rappers and shit like that and i know people really liked it because i put people onto a lot of music and shit but the reason i stopped doing it is just for copyright reasons i don't own the music uh and i i started getting a lot of copyright um strikes on my channel not strikes but like um content id matches where you lose revenue um so like they would take all the revenue from the video and like me personally i'm not gonna spend eight to ten eight to twelve hours editing a video just so somebody can take the money that from my hard earned work because i wanted to use their song and at the end of the day i don't own the shit so it's copyright i get what you're saying um i could use it for promotion and shit like that but like the industry just wasn't there right there and like i don't have access to all these rappers to get written permission and shit i did hear actually from clubhouse last night that apparently like independent record labels are paying streamers big time money to play their artists music on stream and you would get cleared for this shit so i'm looking into that but that's more of like a money play i don't know uh the, everything's coming full circle it might it wouldn't come back to my youtube but maybe twitch because i'm hearing that's becoming a thing now uh, so we're going to see. But yeah, copyright reasons. I just don't want to lose. I've been I've been in it at 14 years. I don't want to lose my YouTube channel over the fact that niggas want to hear Usher at the end of my damn song uh, videos. So that's why. Next question comes from Naruto. And he said, I remember you mentioning that you wanted to get into voice acting. If uh, if you'd consider getting into narration or animation, what genres would you be interested in? If anime specifically, what type of anime genres would you be more interested in? Uh, I have no specific like genre that I'm interested in. I'm just looking for opportunity. I don't think you should limit yourself uh, when it when it comes to these type of things. Right. So like if I can get into book narration, that's cool. I'll read you niggas a little bedtime story or whatever. That's cool. If I can get into fucking shonen anime or slice of life, that's cool. If I can do more like radio. I mean, I mean, I already do ad reads. You see it in my podcast. Like that's kind of that's uh that that's like almost like radio type shit um i, I don't want to limit myself to any type of genre or fucking nickelodeon cartoons or whatever also another reason i don't want to limit myself and i'm interested in anything as long as it seems cool is because i feel like i have a wide vocal range um i can give you like super silly uh voices i can give you like ignorant ass nigga voices and shit i can give you i can give you uh more stern characters with like bass in the voice i feel like i have a wide vocal range in terms of my voice acting ability i just need the opportunity but the problem with voice acting community is it's very tight-knit very unionized and if you notice especially if you watch anime if you notice like a lot of the voice actors sound the same in dubbed anime if you watch oh, yeah i do dub gang do, do. um yeah if you notice uh, i don't know what that was i apologize yeah if you notice if you watch dubbed anime a lot of the voice actors sound the same and that's because they are it's a very tight-knit group and they keep that money to themselves. So it's hard to break into that industry. So I'm interested in anything. I just want to get my feet wet and uh, add something to the resume. Because if there's one thing you want to know about me, I'm always trying to grow that resume. Don't be allergic to me. I was talking about it last night on stream. Motherfuckers was asking me why I don't play ranked in fucking Apex. Bitch, because it doesn't make me any fucking money. Like, yeah, I'm pretty good at Apex. But, like, I don't I have no desire to be a pro gamer. I don't want to waste 18 hours of my day practicing one game, staring at a fucking screen, hoping that I win some prize money from a tournament when I can get some real acts of actual passive steady income um, doing things that I love. Um, fucking motherfuckers be addicted to ranked gameplay. You need to get addicted to updating your damn job resume. Anyways, um, the next question comes from uh, Cry Levy, and he says, what up, TBH? I always wanted to know the exact glasses you wear on stream. All right, so the current glasses that I'm wearing, if you're watching the video version at youtube.com slash the Black Hokage, these ones are called Gamer Advantage. Gamer Advantage, just go to gameradvantage.com. 
um their blue light so for those of you i have 20 20 vision i don't have any problems with my vision i wear glasses when i stream or when i do long sessions of editing when i'm sitting in front of the monitor because blue light is not good for you um for those you don't aware blue light affects your your mind your brain um it fucks up your ability to uh release melatonin so then you have trouble sleeping so if you're one of those people who does a lot of late night gaming or a lot of late night typing papers any type of work on the computer um and you're staring at a monitor that bright ass monitor you're actually fucking up your melatonin levels um and that's why you struggle to sleep that's why you're probably insomnia uh, an insomniac so the, uh, a good way to counteract that is to get some glasses that protect your eyes from blue light they block it um i like gamer advantages because they have they're a little expensive they're like they're like a hundred dollars you can get some cheap ones off of amazon but they don't really i've used the cheap ones they don't really do that much um i can tell the difference wearing these um and they, honestly i shouldn't even be talking about them they should be paying me um but they are expensive they have like a patent some type of patented technology on their website they were saying where um it blocks blue light at the source versus most blue light glasses they block it just kind of um how's the word can i how can i word this they, they it's like a shield these ones almost like absorb it or whatever i don't know i can't explain it i'm not i'm not a fucking glasses expert all i can tell you is these ones are nice and then i also have some ones from zinni if you want some cheaper ones those ones are they're not as good as gamer advantages but they're better than the ones you can get on amazon those are like mid-tier these are like high tier that i'm wearing if you want some mid-tier ones that are like uh 30 40 dollars go to zinni z-e-n-n-i uh they have a lot of blue light glasses they have a, a brand called blockers um those are pretty cool too but if you want the high-end ones, I can tell you there's a difference. Like on their website, they'll tell you like 98% of people report it. They sleep better once they start wearing uh, blue light lens glasses. So protect your eyes, man. Y'all spend a lot of money investing in shit that you don't need. Invest in your eyes because you only have one set, uh, one set of eyes. Your eyes going to go blind staring at the damn screen. Uh, so yeah, Gamer Advantage and Zenny are the two brands that I would recommend if you're looking for some blue light lenses. Um... The next question comes from the bake film and he says do you ever write a script for your content if not then is it a simple outline with comedic improv serving as improv serving as glue thanks for your time love the show it depends on the video um i used to do a lot of scripted content like back in the day absolutely especially like with the reviews or like commentaries i used to script everything that i would do the only thing is like I, the way i was scripted is i was scripted in a conversational manner so you couldn't even tell it was a script i was scripted the way that i talk versus sounding like a script if that makes sense um these days i don't script as much every once in a while i will but these days i'm kind of shifting the content away like people people in the comment section they bitch and complain they want like comedic videos and i upload them and people don't watch them but when i upload news stories about what's the hottest trending topic on twitter and fucking google trends um like the latest gta 6 rumors or what happened with the xbox and the, and the price hike and shit people watch that shit um, so I, I think me personally, I'm moving away from the, the comedic stuff. It'll still be there a little bit. Um, that'd be more, mostly on Twitch, uh, and more towards like just the news cycle for my channel. Cause people seem to really enjoy my opinions on things and I don't write scripts for that. I just read the article and then I share my thoughts and I freestyle everything and try to add a little bit of comedic improv in it. So now I don't overthink it, uh, constantly evolve, constantly try new things is figure out what works for you and I'm, i think i figured out something that worked for me that can help change my channel and help me pick up some new subs because people seem to really like that so uh yes and no depends on what you're doing uh next question comes from dre and he says do you think that games journalists nowadays review games with more emotions rather than facts or vice versa this question is kind of hard to answer because i don't really understand what you mean um do they review it with more emotions rather than facts i think one of the things i think i gotta realize is uh game reviews are opinions uh their opinions of a person um so there's always going to be the human element involved there's always going to be emotions uh like what do you mean like when you say and i can't even talk to you what do you mean when you say rather than facts the thing about a game review is it's rooted in opinion so it's never really about facts the only type of factual things you could talk about in a game review is like let's say like cyberpunk we all agree cyberpunk is very glitchy and has performance issues that's a fact right but after that everything else is subjective um whether or not you enjoy the game and the gameplay mechanics that's all emotion driven that's all uh what you personally like it's all opinion so when you say are they are they doing things with emotion versus facts you, you're supposed to do both i don't understand i don't really understand what the question is on that uh you just had to I, if anything i think y'all gotta stop putting so much merit on these journalists opinions if you're interested in the game fucking play it there are so many games that have been defined as trash and i enjoy them um if you look at a trailer and you feel like you will like that shit stop letting journalists say oh this is not uh, just fucking play it dog it's your money 
stop asking people and, and, and think for yourself uh the next question comes from goonsby and he says when you were younger at the college how did you adjust to the nine to five grind i just graduated school and i've been working for two months full time and it feels dead in any personal tips to make the job slightly better uh how do i adjust to it um these questions are always weird because i get these guys i get these questions from y'all all the time um like nigga, i got bills I, I swear i swear i swear i say this like every fucking pot nigga i got bills i don't know what your situation is uh but like i've never lived a comfortable lifestyle i've been on my own since i was well technically 18 i've been on my own since i was 18 years old i didn't have no safety net i didn't have nobody to help me so like i never it never even crossed my mind to give up because if i give up i'm gonna end up homeless that's how i stay up that's how i stay motivated i'd rather cry in a maybach than fucking cry on the streets basically um and like you've only been doing this shit for two months just look at your job as a stepping stone a stepping stone if, if you feel like it's dead end that's cool uh while you're at your job when you're on your lunch break get on all them websites and start searching for another job dog use it as a stepping stone use it as a resume play to build yourself up and to get something better that's what i would say always look forward to the future it might be dead end because you're not even thinking about the future that's so that's what i would tell you get your ass on a computer while on your lunch break you could be eating at the same time and start looking at other jobs i was also i saw a video the other day too and i learned that um a lot of jobs that are hiring nowadays they don't even like people who have been at a company for 10 20 years they like more so people who worked at a job for like two or three years and then move on because it shows your ability to adapt um so don't be afraid to leave don't be afraid to show your value especially if they're not giving a raise um if you feel like it's a dead end it's because you run into that dead end you need to you need to run to a door that's what i would tell you and just accept hey this is what it takes to be an adult i'm gonna tell y'all right now it only gets worse the older you get the more responsibility especially if you want a family especially if you want a woman or a man or whatever the fuck you into in your life more responsibility is coming i don't know where this i feel like a lot of y'all be complaining like what it, what you going through is not unique dog it is not unique this is what it is why i always tell people who are younger who are listening you better enjoy your youth when you young you want to be old and then when you older you want to be young you better enjoy your youth because it ain't for everybody me personally i'm a competitor so like i'm cool with it obviously i have my breakdowns and shit like that but i'm back on my bullshit you see how hard i've been going with the youtube videos lately. i've been going fucking crazy you got to find what you passionate about it sounds to me like that's you're just not passionate about whatever you're doing so find you a side hustle or find you another job you'll be all right bro you only been working for two months nigga suck it up um <laughs> fucking the next question comes from bizarre kai bizarre and he says did you notice a bias in coverage for black or people of color streamers when it comes to twitch news like i feel like every clip or story of the live stream fails crowds but rarely cover anyone else you know i agree i was talking about this on the stream the other day um i'm one of the bigger content creators and like i'm not the biggest obviously i would say i would say i'm like mid-tier i know i know my place in the universe i'm mid-tier right i'm not small but i'm not like the biggest thing in the world i have my following um but i never get covered i never get covered on live stream fails i never get covered on any of these youtube channels and like i feel like personally i made a lot of dope content a lot of dope quotables a lot of dope interesting funny things but like they don't show any love i've only been on one of those live stream fails channels once and that was because of some drama that's all they fucking cover and unfortunately our white counterparts they indulge in the drama all the f every week with these like it, they circle jerk these live stream channels they fucking circle jerk the same big like 20 white streamers and that's because they all beef with each other to the point where i actually think they sit in the discord and on some illuminati shit and be like all right i'm gonna beef with this person and then i'm gonna be i don't be into that shit like i be in my own world i just like to joke and have a good time and it's a shame too because those live stream like twitch clips channels on youtube and shit and like the reddit it used to like like five six years ago it used to be like just random streamers and like funny clips and like you would find a lot of great funny streamers because of that but as of like over the last two years it's just become a circle jerk of like the same 20 big white streamers fucking jerking each other off and beefing and shit i don't fucking get it i've only been i've only been featured on live stream fails one time and it had nothing to do with my content or who i am and what it was was um like a few months ago uh when i was working out on stream uh twitch staff came in my chat and they donated some bits and in in that donation they said shout out to whatever store they were trying to get me to shout out their store for like five dollars worth of bits they tried to trick me into shouting out their brand and i got pissed about that shit because you're not supposed to do that twitch did eventually apologize and that's been a big thing because like burger king did it like cash app be doing that shit they be trying to 
for stretch shout outs on people for like cheap ass money um twitch did apologize to staff and they said we don't know why he did that but he did it or whatever so i i complained about that shit on twitter um and i ended up on the channel and what was the reason for drama um actually no there's there's another time i ended up uh it wasn't on a live stream i i think i ended up on the lsf uh reddit in 2017 too because i tweeted about how like a lot of white streamers like their viewers be donating and they be saying fucking the n-word and the donations and like they be they they don't i was like i have a problem with that because they don't shut that shit down so i was like you enable your audience basically and i remember somebody posted about that on the reddit and like they were just listen man that that, that created like drama and shit i was like if, if people really care they would just turn their donations off and talk to the audience but like niggas love money so damn much they'll let them say the n-word with the hard r because when you make donations like a, a robot reads that shit out but yeah i remember i ended up on reddit for that for criticizing people for that uh, Cause I'm like, yo, if you really cared about black people, you shut your fucking donations off for five minutes and tell your audience to stop. But you don't talk to your audience because uh, you love that money. Anyways, yeah, there's definitely a bias. They don't give a fuck unless, unless um, I think they'll start caring about black people if uh, or people of color. Period. Because that shit's been co-opted. It can't just be black people now. Um, if more black people start getting like on orgs and shit like that, because they will get more visibility. But a lot of them don't even look our way, so we don't exist to them uh the next question comes from nocturnal virgo, virgo and he said why do people feel you have to have full you have to be full into fashion to sell merch like why can't i just have an idea and sell it versus trying to be the next fenty um first and foremost who the fuck said that who said you got to be the next fenty or like some big fashionista in order to sell merch i don't know what circles you hanging out in but i have a sneaky suspicion that maybe one or two of your friends said that you're not a fashionista and that's why you can't sell your merch and i think you let that get to you a little bit too much so those type of friends, I would highly recommend you cut them off because I'm going to be honest, I've never heard that shit in my life. And even if that's not true, my speculation about like your one or two friends saying that and then just getting a little bit too much to, into you, to you, um, I would say, who, who fucking cares? If your shit is, listen, if you make dope merch, people will buy it. Who gives a fuck whether or not you're a fan? And then if you make it and people buy it, it'll turn you into the fashionista that you want to be. So in my opinion, with this question, I would ask you, why do you fucking care so much? You should be worried about your passion. If your shit is dope and you truly believe in it, fuck them, bro. The thing about your vision is it's your vision. It's in your brain. And a lot of people will not see it until you create it and it's successful. And you got to charge that to the game, unfortunately. Not everybody's going to come with you. Not everybody's going to shoot in the gym with you. But if you feel like you got a dope idea, just do it. Don't worry about outside sources. Worry about your customers because those are the people who are supporting you anyway. You're welcome. Um, next question comes from JoJo. And he said... Why would what would you say the advantage is? What are the what what? Uh, uh, ah, wait, this show my stars, oh, Apple Podcast. Uh, he said, what would you say are the advantages and disadvantages of streaming with a webcam versus other streamers that stream with only their voice? Um, I think streaming. There's a couple of big streamers that stream only with their voice, but that's because they've been on the platform since 2011, since on Twitch since 2011 when it first started. So they didn't have a lot of competition and they were able to maintain that audience. But nowadays, I would recommend everybody, if you're a new streamer, at least have a webcam. You don't have to have a fancy camera, but at least have a webcam for relatability reasons. Right. Like, let's say you're not the most interesting uh, person when it comes to dialogue, um, like your reactions in the game, your facial expressions. Uh, people can clip that and they become a meme and you never know how you're going to blow up. I think an example, a prime example is a uh, conceited, right? Like the the white we we as black folks, we knew who conceited was because he's a battle rapper. And then even if you don't watch battle, if you don't watch URL, you might have known him from um, Wild and Out with Nick Cannon. But like the white audience had no clue who he was until someone randomly clipped a fucking smack battle from like 2010 it was so random when that meme blew up because i remember that battle watching that shit like in my college dorm or some shit like that like somebody clipped an old battle from like 2010 of him going mm. that shit went viral on social media and he blew up his his profile blew up so i always tell people use a camera because you never know like I always say, like um, Drake's um, Hotline Bling was a great video. A lot of people clowned him, but I knew he, he did that shit on purpose because he was trolling. He knew you guys were going to clip it. He knew you guys were going to meme it. So it can be it just gives an extra layer when you use a camera. Right. It's not just like about the gameplay. If, if you don't use a camera, it's just about the gameplay and the dialogue. Right. But if you do, it's about the gameplay, the dialogue and the camera. You give an extra layer for people to clip you and that could be your reaction. So don't limit yourself is what I would say for new people. Use a camera because it could lead to funny stuff. It could lead to you becoming a meme. And in your, it doesn't matter how you blow up. Fucking blow up, dog. That's that's what I say. Open every door. Walk through them all. 
um, and get to the shmoney. So yeah, use a webcam. Uh, that's all I got on my show notes. I honestly have not been listening to any new music other than the Kid Cudi album. That shit is fire. Um, but I don't really have any, like a lot of new music. Uh, I haven't watched WandaVision episode three yet. I still got to catch up on Black Clover. Honestly, I've been focusing on content creation, trying to drop at least like five videos a week, at least like I've been trying to do it on the weekdays and stuff. Um, just trying to be consistent, trying to find a way to blow, uh, 2021. I'm focused on trying to grow my, grow my YouTube channel. I know some of you fucking trolls in the comment section don't believe it, but YouTube is not my focus. Um, when I'm over on Twitch doing great, getting looks on the front page, getting brand deals out the ass and shit like that. Like, um, it just hasn't been my focus, but I made it a goal for myself. I'm gonna try to focus on it more and see where it goes. Uh, I'm not gonna hold my breath uh because i don't box myself in so it's hard to categorize me but it's cool uh i got a lot of stuff coming behind the scenes a lot of stuff that i think is gonna be cool it's gonna shock people we're gonna move the culture uh and if i if i'm able to pull this stuff off we're just waiting for the paperwork it's gonna be a lot of niggas on my dick a lot it's cool a lot of niggas that talk shit oh i always believe in you like i said to the dude earlier charge it to the game motherfuckers are never gonna see your vision until you see it. i don't want to my goal was never to be and i know this has nothing to do with the question but my goal was never to be the biggest youtuber or the biggest twitch streamer my goal was god buddy i'm trying to be a king of god i'm trying to be do shit that people ain't done before <laughs> and this has been hokage thoughts episode 50 i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did, please remember to rate the show five stars on Apple Podcasts. Once again, I'm also giving away a next-gen console. There will be a link in the description box below uh, at youtube.com slash theblackokage. If you want to win a free Xbox Series X, 4K capable, you can play Cuphead at 120 frames or Forza. Um, if you want to financially support the show, hit my cash app, dollar sign the Black Hokage 08. Anything is welcome to keep the kid motivated. Other than that, that's all I got on my show notes. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of... Hokage Thoughts.